right, so hello everybody, welcome back. Time for the third episode. So this one uh, hopefully will be pretty fast um, because I'm just gonna be doing a broad sweep over what Nix OS is. Um, I'm using it right now, surprise. Um, why is this thing that we've gone over in the past two episodes, right? Just this this little piece of uh, piece of uh, package management that lets you create this symlink to uh, a built package. How does that, how does that become a whole operating system? So let's turn this flake, which is originally example C. Let's turn it to something completely different. Um, so first, I'm going to do is get okay. I'm going to get commit dash m three, and then I'm going to do rm. I'm gonna, so I'm going to trash the results. I'm going to trash source. Um, oh wait, you know what? Pitch. All right, here we go. And then we are going to get rm default.nix because we don't actually need a package right now. All right, and I'm also going to to example move this to example mix OS. All right, uh, new stuff. Okay, so let's make this flake.nix into a Nix OS configuration. Um, well, what does that mean? What it, what, it, what even is a Nix OS configuration? Well. Um, there are commands that will be available to you if you install Nix OS, um, and one of them is Nix OS rebuild. And you can use this command to, uh, you, well, you'll direct it so uh, to a uh, flake that contains a configuration. So we could do dot, so this, this directory has a flake. Um, and, oh, wait, what am I forgetting? Oh, I forgot switch, right. So switch is typically what you're going to use. Um, let's switch, um, and it is going to try to use the code, right? So the Nix code that you write inside of your flake.nix and in any other files, it's going to use that as instructions for how to set up your system. And you can write instructions that say, okay, put files in, put files uh, in 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 Etsy, um, put put stuff in my path, right? Um, if we look at my path here, look, there's a ton of stuff, Nix store stuff. So Nix has added a bunch of stuff to my path. Um, cool. Uh, that's very cool. Uh, let's see how we can actually do that. So let's grab the flake.nix. So just as before with Nix build, it searches for a specific output from the flakes. We are going to supply yet again another specific output from uh, the flake, but this time it is going to be different. So I'm actually going to go to my flake.nix because I am trying to brush up on this right now. Um, yeah, so let's. Yeah, yeah okay. All right. Uh, we've got to supply a set called NixOS configurations. And. Uh, I'm not crazy. Believe you have to supply defaults. And default is going to be equal to, um, oh shoot, give me a moment. Uh, yeah, there it is, nixpackages.lib.nixos. All right. All right, so this, is supplied by Nix packages. It is a function. Nix OS system is a function which will basically create the final derivation, right? Which is the big set of instructions with the big package to build. And the big package is your whole system. So it's going to create a single package which contains you know, all of the dependencies, all of the binaries you wanna have in your path, all of the whatever, everything about your system will be written inside of here. So 
there are a bunch of user-friendly ways to deal with this um, and I'm gonna get into those real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and start by adding some inputs to our system. Um, we have to give it packages, so we could do packages equals packages, but I'm going to do inherit packages. We also need to give it a system, right? So we could do system equals x86, 64 Linux, but I'm, since we already have that up on line, uh, whatever, this 14, um, we're just gonna do inherit system. Okay, and uh, there you go. It's the first two required arguments. And then we can supply it with um, modules. I think special args is optional. Okay, I'll close out of this. Modules equals, there we go. And so we are going to make a bunch of NixOS modules. And modules are a bit like packages because they're functions. So if we were to put one right in here, and just raw uh, without another file, we could do something like, um, so we'd have the colon, uh, we'd wanna put dot, 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 because modules are called with a bunch of arguments, so we wanna ignore those. Um, so we'd have a colon, set, and then we would have something, and then we could put values in here. We could do something like, oh, I don't know. Um, I think there's like time zone. Um, wait. Uh, oh my god, I'm going insane. There we go. Okay. Time dot time zone. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of the options. Time dot time zone equals and then a string of what time zone we want. So for me, I'm doing Eastern time. So I'm doing New York time. And there you go. Um, we've now done a little bit of configuration. But it is much easier to do this in separate files. So I'm going to copy this and uh, let's make a new file. I'm going to call it, um, we'll just call it module.nix. Or actually, uh, the more common one, which you actually get this file by default located in uh, Etsy nixos configuration.nix. You get configuration.nix by default, which is like, you can see here, function. It's got some inputs. And then the outputs has stuff like time dot time zone. Um, so I'm going to call mine that. Um, if you are newly installing Nix OS, you can actually copy your Nick configuration dot Nix into this directory. Um, so I'm going to make mine, open it up, and then inside of the modules list right here, I am going to import dot slash configuration dot Nix. There we go. And uh, let's go into it. I copy what I had before, format this, and uh, we're pretty much good to go. All right, so uh, let's see how we can apply this. Um, if I format this, uh, let's add configuration.nix to the git, and we'll do nixos rebuild switch flake dot and enter. Um, what am I forgetting here? NixOS configurations. Right, the host name thing. Okay, so for NixOS configurations, you want to provide the um, the host name uh, as one of the set options. So we're gonna do my host name is mutant. Um, this is a little weird because. Uh, I guess it's sort of stateful because if your NixOS configuration changes your host name, then this will change. Um, I think there's a better way to do this, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So we want the pa what it wants, which it says it does not currently provide, is packages. Ex okay, wait, that's not what I want. Nix. Okay, so it doesn't provide NixOS configurations. Dot host name. Hmm. Okay, so we don't want default. It seems like this shouldn't be called default. This should be called my host name. So I'll do mutant. There we go. And let's try that. And there we go. Okay, so we're gonna get some errors here. Um, so we're, we're not specifying a file system. Um, 
we need to have options about that. Um, you must also set stuff related to your bootloader. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to cover all that actually, because again, if you install Nix OS and you just go to Etsy slash Nix OS, this, these two files right here, if you just import configuration.nix, right, and you'll see even configuration.nix in turn imports uh, hardware configuration.nix, this is really all you need to know. Um, okay, here's the inputs, the packages. Here are the imports. Um, so these are other modules that it should recursively, right, in, in turn import. And then we've got stuff about the bootloader and all this stuff. Here's the host name, right, the mutant host name. Um, and so you can just use those. Um, actually, I'm going to open that up though, because there is one thing that I want to mention um, before I close out this video, because um, there are tons and tons of modules. Um, so the first thing is you're probably going to install packages on your system. Um, so you're going to set this environment.system packages, right? And these are things to put in your path, basically. So if inside of a package, right, so if I do ls, Oh, well, I'll do see nix store and I will do ls grep uh, core utils, right? So here's, you're going to get a bunch of .drv files. Um, I'll just grab one that doesn't have that. And if I ls the contents of this, you'll see it's got a bin folder. And if I ls the bin folder, right, there's a bunch of core utils in here. So when you add something to environment system packages, it will basically treat it as if the bin that is in that package, so this bin was copied into slash bin, right? So your actual slash bin, which uh, by default only contains shell. Um, so, uh, Let's see here. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, oh, right, the with syntax. So with packages, what this does is it says everything inside here, uh, if you can't find it, then look inside packages. This prevents you from having to go like this, packages.vim, packages.wget, packages.get, packages.firefire. So you don't have to do that. So now instead, if it finds something that you know it doesn't know about, so there's no variable called vim, it will look inside packages, provided we provide this with packages functionality. Okay, so um, all right, yeah. So the last thing I have to say is that uh, if you are going to be uh, doing this for, for real um, and you're gonna be extensively uh, configuring your system. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna go to mine. Uh, it's, it's a very, it's a very large repository. Um, you are going to have uh, a lot of options that you're gonna be setting here. Um, and it's kind of hard to get a graph on everything. Um, so you're gonna have to, uh, let's see here, um, let's see NVIDIA. So you're gonna have to look up how these modules work. And uh, some of them are gonna be out of date. The NixOS wiki, I'm sorry to say, is sort of works, but is a little bit out of date. Um, I think this is mostly fine. Um, there's, a, there's some scenarios where it's, usually it's the stuff in the Nix wiki still works, but it's just, you know, uh, not, maybe not the optimal solution. Um, so in this case, uh, there are these settings that we can put inside of a module. So in the same way we did environment.system packages or whatever, we can have this services.xserver.video drivers and then set that to NVIDIA. And uh, that will change an XORG configuration in our built system. Um, and yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's it for the wiki. So if the wiki ever fails you, uh, the one last thing you got github.com slash nixos slash nix packages baby and uh, you're gonna have to read through stuff you're gonna have to go to nixos modules and uh, start looking around um, I recommend doing go to file doing modules and uh, I don't know NVIDIA right so I just look up modules slash NVIDIA 
and uh, look here. It's uh, showing me a file called nvidia.mix, which is in, in here, so I'll check that out. Um, let's see what the options are. Um, so we got all this, we got this big let block. So generally, whenever you see something inside a let block, uh, I'd say just skip over it. Um, you can come back to that later because later you'll see, you know, some weird variable like, uh, I don't know, you'll see some weird variable and you'll wonder where it's defined. You'll control F for it and you'll probably find it in the let, let block. Um, but you don't really need to worry about what the let block is right now. So let's, uh, let's look through here very handily. Is an option set. This is how you define modules. Um, you can define your own modules if you want to get into that. Uh, you don't have to, uh, but let's uh, look through some of these options. So we've got power management.enable, experimental power management through system D. Here we've got fine grained. We've got, okay, fine grained. We've got a ton of stuff going on. Prime sync. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, there's a better way to look at this, but I don't really remember what it is. Honestly, I just always look at the source code. Um, I think there is documentation that is generated from this. Um, if anyone remembers what that is, I will uh, slap it in the comments because uh, I do not remember right now. I just, yeah, I just read this. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything. Uh, you might have to read the source code a bit if you're looking for certain modules. Uh, but generally just looking up how to do X on Mix OS works uh, unless you have a pretty uh, specific problem, in which case um, you might have to be pretty familiar with how packages work and then, you know, make your own package that does the thing that you want in order to sort of port it to Mix OS. All right. Um, that's all I've got for the final episode. Might make a bonus episode about Home Manager, maybe, maybe one day. I'm tired right now, so... That is it for today. I will see you on the flip side.